lots of UFO news to talk about today, guys. So get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, to start with, of course, Trump was on Joe Rogan the other day. And at the end of that discussion, uh, they talked about UFOs. And a lot of people are very excited about this and everybody's talking about it. Uh, you know, Trump was looking up at the stars, talking about space people. Uh, but what did he say exactly? Did he say anything that he hasn't said before? No, he really didn't. He, he said that, you know, he's not a UFO person, but there's, you know, pilots that have seen some stuff and he you know, just seems to take them seriously. He didn't go any further than he's really gone before. Although there was one moment when they were talking about life on Mars and Trump was seeming to indicate that there was life on Mars. And Joe Rogan was kind of talking over him. Um, and, you know, it's unclear if Trump knows something about that. Because there are people like John Lear and others who will talk about how there are actually advanced life forms on every single planet. Maybe they exist at a different vibratory level or something, but every planet is occupied by intelligent beings, according to people like that. So, uh, you know, it'd be interesting if Trump knew something about that. I, I don't know if he does, uh, but there are all sorts of people that believe that Trump is going to be the disclosure president. Uh, here's Tim Burchett, of course, uh, saying something like that. We've got to have a strong leader in the White House that grasps the problem that we, what's going on. And I've actually um, talked to folks, well, I've talked to President Trump, but um, I'm convinced that if, if he's elected, that there will be disclosure and there will be much gnashing of teeth because I feel like he, he gets the, gra he gets it now. I think part of his problem in the past was he trusted people that were around him and it was just too dadgum big. We're going to get a grasp on everything. And I believe this will be that opportunity. Okay, well, maybe, Tim, maybe. Ross Coulthard, of course, has previously previously said that Trump wanted to disclose the truth of the UFO phenomenon, uh, but was threatened into silence. And, of course, Brigadier General of Israel, Haim Ashed, co-founder of Israel's space program, also said something very similar, that there was a galactic federation of planets, uh, the various leaders of the world governments knew about it, uh, Trump knew about it. When he found found out about it, he wanted to disclose it, but was talked out of it at the last moment. Uh, here is Ross uh, talking a little bit about what he expects in the days ahead. If Donald Trump does become president, there's a lot of speculation that he's determined to get to the truth of this matter. It's significant that he's initiated a public conversation about the UFO issue. And I can see as a former president, he's very constrained by the briefing that he's been given. He can't talk about things like the crash retrieval program. And I suspect if and when he does become president, we may see a very different President Trump making a very big decision, a big capital D for disclosure. But I do think privately inside the Congress, there are now very senior senators and congressional representatives who are very seriously engaged with this subject. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, not a great screen grab, Ross. Let me see if I can get a better screen grab for you. Uh, yeah, okay, so what do I make of all of this? You know, let me know what your thoughts, but I think that if Trump was going to disclose while he was in office previously, he would have built up to that a little bit more. Uh, in all of, you know, whenever he was asked about it and he would respond to it, there was a gradual shift in the, the, the tone of his answers uh, to being more skeptical, to being more, you know, saying there was something there. But it wasn't, you know, the shift needed to build up to something like the Galactic Federation. You know, if you're, if you're going to disclose that, I think you would have built up to that a little bit more strongly. And every interview would have gotten stronger and stronger and stronger uh, leading up to the revelation of the Galactic Federation. So I don't think he was on the path to reveal that. I, I just, I don't. I think that would have been kind of a, almost a 180 uh, switch or flip from where what his position was, um, you know, saying I'm not a UFO guy, but yeah, I mean, people are seeing some stuff and they're credible people uh, to, hey guys, there's a galactic federation. Uh, yeah, th there you go. Yeah, I, I don't think, I don't think that he was building up to that, but let me know if you disagree. 
but I will tell you one thing I am excited about, uh, and this isn't a political discussion, but if Trump does win and Elon Musk gets into office and does establish his government accountability office, uh, rooting out government corruption and stuff like that, could it be possible that that government accountability office could find the UFO control group, right? Think about it, guys. What is more corrupt than the shadow government, the breakaway civilization, the control group? Uh, yeah, and if there was a government body devoted to, you know, finding and unearthing government corruption, wow, what an opportunity to disclose, right? What an opportunity uh, to break into the UFO control group. And it would be ironic if Elon Musk, who publicly says there are no UFOs, uh, for him to discover and uh, reveal the existence of the UFO control group. Uh, that gets me excited. So, you know, let, let me know if you see any potential there. I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I mean, I'm not, I'm not optimistic for that. But hey, it is something that is possible. Uh, if, the, if a government accountability office was created and sincerely, uh, you know, staffed uh, and run. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. But many others are talking about the days to come and what to expect with open contact. And of course, among those are, you know, Bashar and Daryl Anka. Uh, so what does Bashar have to say? This is Daryl Anka uh, reporting on information given to him by the entity known as Bashar. My understanding is that... <clears throat> There are certain things that have been going on in the background for a little while in terms of extraterrestrials quietly and silently working with certain scientists and government officials here and there that are amenable to open contact and that they will probably be some of the institutions that will start introducing certain extraterrestrials to us in a way that we can handle. My understanding is that, of course, they will choose to introduce the extraterrestrials that are a little bit more like us at first, uh, a little bit more human in appearance, because there are some genetic similarities between us and other ETs, and literally some genetic connections. So probably beings like Pleiadians, who are said to be very human looking, you know, Nordic like, uh, probably some of the hybrids that are a little bit more human looking will be among the first. And then it'll probably evolve into some of the other beings like the greys and mantis beings and so on and so forth down the line that are less and less and less physically like us. So there you go. Uh, yeah, the, the beings have a plan. And when they start open contact in the near future, they're going to start revealing themselves the most human looking ones first, of course. Uh, and then the less and less human ones. I don't know. I'm impatient to see the less human one. I want to see Jabba the Hutt, you know? Uh, I don't want to see people that look like me. I can look in the mirror and see people like me. Uh, but hey, I mean, I get it. And that's probably what we need. Uh, you know, like in Star Trek, they all look pretty human. Uh, you know, the original series. Uh, but there were some 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 differences. So, so, some ones that looked like a little bit less human. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, so that is potentially some of the beings plan for disclosure. And it's good to know if this information is accurate, that they are indeed planning for a peaceful process of disclosure. Meanwhile, from Jose de la Rios Lopez uh, comes a really cool orb video of an orb going through a wall. Check it out, guys. Let me know if you think this is legit. Uh, it's a very large orb. You know, I would do ghost hunting and we would see, uh, uh, you know, hundreds of orbs at a time, but they were tiny little orbs, but they would go through solid objects like walls or doors. Uh, so I've seen stuff like this before, but never such a huge orb, uh, you know, going through a wall like that. That is really cool. I think this is legit. Let me know if you think this is a legit uh, video of an orb going through a wall. And if you do, uh, you know, what is it? What is an orb? Is it a other dimensional vehicle? And there's a being inside there flying around coming from somewhere else. Is that an entity on its own? Uh, is that a, you know, drone, uh, other dimensional drone of some sort? Uh, let me know what you think orbs are in the comments below. Speaking of mantis people, since Bashar mentioned mantis people, check this thing out. 
Uh, as Black Hole reports on, this is a pictograph at Barrier Canyon in the central Utah desert depicting an anthro anthropomorph with bug eyes in antenna from 2000 uh, BC, uh, you know, from somewhere between 2000 BC and 580, uh, and of course the United States. Now it's really interesting that Chris Bledsoe believes the lady might reveal herself in Utah in 2026 or 27. And of course there's lots of stuff happening in Utah, look at Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, were there mantis beings or something similar running around Utah back in the day? Meanwhile, getting back to official U.S. disclosure, it's really important to get the politicians on board with this. You have to get people in Congress uh, to feel like they have a mandate to disclose the truth about UFOs. So it's really important to gauge where the politicians are. And to that end, George Knapp uh, asked some Nevada uh, Congress people where they were at with, with UFO disclosure. Let's give a listen. New UAP hearings are slated for both the House and the Senate. Do you support more UFO transparency and should Congress create something independent of the Department of Defense to conduct the research? So Ms. Rosen, you'll have one minute here. Should Congress do its own independent investigation into UFOs? Well, uh, this is a topic that we have talked about. I sit on the Armed Services Committee and we know that uh, as your video showed, Area 51 uh, is here in Nevada, in the center of Nevada, and it's a top secret military site. I do think it's important that we do our independent investigation. Of course, in the Senate, we are responsible for oversight. We have committees in both houses. I do think it would be important to see what we're doing there and if there is any merit to this. Uh, Mr. Brown, you have one moment here to respond. Should Congress do its own independent investigation into UFOs? Well, I think I'm just as curious as, as anyone. I'd love to know what's going on. I never saw any sort of technology like that when I was in the service. Um, I'm not sure I tr fully trust Congress, um, you know, to be able to figure it out. Maybe Elon Musk can. Okay, well, I like that. A, uh, a politician saying he doesn't trust Congress. That actually uh, makes, me, it makes me happy. Uh, but the other one was kind of a non-answer, uh, you know, but either one and neither of them were, were, were super gung-ho about it. Uh, but there you go. There is the temperature of at least two politicians uh, in the modern era. Meanwhile, another great UFO sighting from John Bell at Real Florida UFO. Uh, check out this fast moving object that changes direction. I don't know if you can see that, but it, it goes, uh, yeah, it makes a curve. It makes a curve. That is not a shooting star, not a meteor, nothing like that. That is an, that is an anomalous object, my friends. Uh, yeah, if everybody uh, would go check out Real Florida UFO, you'll probably be amazed by the amount of contacts John is getting on a nightly basis. He goes out every night uh, to look at the stars and bringing his camera with him, and the UFOs show up for him uh, usually multiple times a night. Uh, he'll get different sorts of UFOs. Uh, objects that are close to the ground and they're more like phantasmal orb like objects uh, and then we'll get what seem to be more structured craft uh, high above but uh, yeah it's a it's incredible the amount of contact he gets pretty much every night and here's one of his videos showing the difference between one of his UFOs and a plane uh, and how they cross paths check it out that's the plane obviously with its blinking light but he had been following that object, uh, which uh, seems more of an anomalous UFO. And then as he's getting that one, he's got a fast moving object right there uh, that again, appears to be changing direction. Uh, so he has multiple objects. Uh, and, and then he's got the more phantasmal objects uh, closer to the ground. Uh, is that a Tinkerbell sighting? I love it. I love the, the varied contacts he gets the multiple objects that show up for him every night, different sorts of craft and vehicles or beings, whatever they are. If you haven't checked out Real Florida UFO, I'll link to it below uh, and uh, you are in for a treat. Speaking of cool UFO videos, this is a UFO video shared by Jaime Masson. Check out this weird object. What do you think that thing is? Kind of blue, kind of flickering. 
Um, you know, it doesn't look drone-like to me. It doesn't look like it could be explained by a Chinese lantern or anything like that. But, you know, it's hard to tell. It's in such poor resolution. Don't know what's going on with this crazy object. But, you know, from, from what you can see of it, it, it certainly appears anomalous. But again, it's in such re low resolution that it could be pretty much anything. But I'm inclined to give Jaime the benefit of the doubt on this one. Yeah, you can see how it kind of changes uh, position here. How it's kind of facing down and then it gradually tilts up to be facing a different direction. Very interesting. Unclear and murky. But intriguing. Let me know what you think about it all in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the like button and the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. Love to see you guys there. If you want to support Cosmic Road in a bigger way, consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt like this bad boy uh, in the merch store below. Or you can become a channel member. Channel members are rock stars. And I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos on the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.